All right, today I'm going to be playing one of my favorite pers person shooters of the DOS era, Quake. Which is, in my opinion, the very first game to introduce 3D models and 3D, more 3D environments to the PC gaming world. That's better. All right. All right, that's much better. Anyways, like I said before, in my opinion, as I was saying, that this game did introduce a lot to the 3D world. Jeez. And there's very specific controls here. Now, before I get now, before I begin here officially, let me just point out that this, in my opinion, was actually the first game that actually introduced uh, more three-dimensional aiming, whereas in games like Doom and Wolfenstein, you can only aim what's at straight ahead of you. In this game, you're going to see a whole more dimension. And yes, I'm playing on this easy, so don't judge me. And I'm not doing this because I want to, it's because it's for time purposes. Now... Going back to the previous screen here for the difficulty selection, I find it kind of weird that you would actually walk into a portal that selects your difficulty. I mean, what's just, I mean, what's wrong with just a simple, uh, just do this, go here, new game, and then just select your difficulty from there. And another thing I also find unusual is why are we walking into a room? Well, it's part of it's because of it's part of the plot. If I remember correctly, that there is a group that created a dimensional, por dimensional portals that calls itself Quake, I believe. And these dimensions go into other worlds. Well, like I said, my memory is not exactly the greatest, but I believe that's what it is. Now, as you can see, these first two enemies right here, fully rendered in 3D. Now, for 1996, this was impressive. But, of course, if you take a look at this today, it's people, people are going to be like, yeah, so what? It's not that impressive. Well, here's something to think on. If it wasn't for a game like this, we wouldn't have games like Halo, Call of Duty, etc., etc. But then again, of course, so, uh, maybe if this game hadn't come along, do you think, uh... Do you think another game would take its place? I shudder to think about that. And I am well aware that by 1996, the PlayStation was already out. So keep that in mind. Now, of course, though, the animation is not exactly smooth, but like I've stated before, for 1996, it was a, it was a sight to behold. And of course, with games like this and Doom and Wolfenstein 3D, in my opinion, still, I think, in my opinion, have aged quite well. I mean, of course, I'm probably sure not all of you are going to agree. Are going to agree, but hey, each their own. Oh, there is actually one other thing I was going to point out is that uh, this is also, at least in my opinion, the first first-person shooter for PC that introduces jumping. Wee. You know, I find it kind of hard to imagine that it's already been 25 years since Quake came out. Jeez, it seems like only yesterday that uh, this game was introduced to the market. But in my opinion, I still say that this game, even to this day, is still worth playing. I mean, I'm probably sure some of you are thinking, Oh, that game is so old, or it's so ancient. Well, like I've previously stated, if this game had not come along, we wouldn't have games like Halo, Call of Duty, whatever else you can think of. And that's something to ponder on. I mean, I'm probably sure some other game would come along and, uh... 
take Quake's place, but the question is, can it have as big of an impact? And in my opinion, I don't think so. Because the old saying goes, you can't argue with success. And this game, in my opinion, was both financially and critically successful. Alright, not a bad way to start the uh, vlog. One thing I will admit is that these enemies aren't as memorable in, as they are as the enemies in Doom. Because, I mean, if you could take... If you talk to someone and say, hey, can you name at least one enemy in Doom? Simple. The Pinky Demon. And, of course, so, you ask him the same question, uh, okay, name one enemy in Quake. Some people are going to be like, who? What? Because that's another opinion that's always often overlooked. Is the roster of enemies. Oh, I want to show you guys. I always love these heads here at Learning Ground. Like, sup, man? <laughs> they're just like, they just sit there so casually, like, nah, it's a living. Somebody's got to do it, man. Always screw this part up. I keep forgetting that uh, this door is open elsewhere. Yeah, I know that. And I just wasted a quad damage for absolutely nothing. Lovely. Well, then again, this is also an opportune time to. Look around and uh, see if I miss any secrets. So it's safe to say that even if you do get lost, it's not hard to backtrack. <laughs> I don't have the silver key because I think I'm going backwards. Yep. I also remember the very, very, very first time playing this game. I also had trouble, uh, Remembering where to go next. Ay, ay, ay. Unless I got myself boxed into a corner, I can't get myself out of, but hey, each their own. 
Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. I gotta go this way. That's one thing about Quake that I really did not like is that sometimes the environments are a little too dark for their own good. So which would add to the more confusion. However, this darkness also does add atmosphere. Because I mean, you can't have a game that's super bright because others you'd be like, oh my eyes, it's so bright in here and you have to turn down the gamma or the brightness or whatever. Yeah, this would have been an opportune time to get that quay that quad power, but whatever. And then there's these guys. The first major annoying enemy in the game, but these guys aren't that difficult to deal with. As long as you keep your distance, you'll be fine. Finding two, three secrets? Not too shabby. Despite the fact I got lost for about three minutes. This is also... Oh, I forgot to mention that the zombies here are not your stereotypical zombies where it's just like... Oh, any weapon will kill him or shoot him once in the head. Heh. <laughs> Doesn't quite work here. Because I really like the concept of... Instead of just killing the zombie the old-fashioned way... You have, you have to... They have to literally explode. That's like I did with that ogre right here. As you saw right there, that explosion did kill that zombie, but he's not dead. And you'll see why in a minute. Oh, he's back, ready for more. I liked how that thing says, shoot the button, like, yeah, we know, we're not idiots. I mean, what did you want me to do, just stare at it? Now, that's one thing about games I don't like is that, you don't tell me what to do, I'll do as I want. Unless it's super urgent or if it's super valuable, then that's a whole different story.
And yes, explosives is the only way to kill these guys. Now I know this seems like a bit of a minute topic here, but I could safely say that this game also introduced a little bit of a puzzle summing technique, like as you saw there just a moment ago, where I had to shoot those two buttons to reveal a secret. Now of course this game's not doesn't have a heavy emphasis on puzzle, but there are areas that does require a little uh a little forethought. Of course, you can't forget the super nail gun.
know there is a way across, but I forget how to get there. Okay, this is the level here that is a real, that can be a real headache. Because you're going to see why. And if I have to let the DOS fly go for a little longer, so be it. Secret area that's in an area that doesn't look quite like a secret area. Don't you just love those in games? Nice, I need to get the gold key. Ah, all this progress just to have one item that you haven't gotten yet.
this guy right here that's up. <clears throat> if you play on the harder difficulties and you go face to face with him, he can be a real pain in the you know what to deal with. But as long as you have the quad power up and the right weapons, not that difficult. Although I do admit, oh, I really like his design. It looks like the combination of a Bonneville Snowman and, uh, and, uh, I'm trying to think. That other creature I'm trying to think of, but. <clears throat> but nonetheless, though, uh. Nonetheless, he is an impressive sight to see. <laughs> Oops. I'm not too bad of a run here. Alright, I think by this point you guys get the idea. It's like I've said before, um, if it wasn't for Quake, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't have games like Halo, Call of Duty, Crisis, pretty much anything else you can think of. And in my opinion, at least, I think this really did uh, set the uh, foundation for three-dimensional models. And like I said, even though the PlayStation uh, was out at the time and games like Crash Bandicoot was out, I think this game did a much better job. No offense to you Crash Bandicoot fans out there. Um... And like I said, if it wasn't for a game like Quake, would we still have games like Halo or Call of Duty or even Crisis today? Of course, that's a matter of opinion and that's a matter of debate. But anyways, thanks for tuning in. I will see you all next time.